This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. A report of a stolen car ends with shots fired by Maplewood police tonight. Neighbors say it never should have happened. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Mike Bush. Police say three teens are now in custody. Five on your side's Holden Kerwicki spent the day speaking with people who live in the area where that shooting took place. He joined us now live with new information about the investigation. Holden. Well, Mike, the shooting happened here in the 7200 block of Zephyr Place, which, as you can see, is a residential neighborhood that is full of young families. However, due to the timing of the shooting, many of the people who lived here didn't know anything had actually happened until they came outside this morning and saw all the crime scene tape. And that includes one man who asked us to disguise his voice. But at the end of the day, they say they're just happy that no one was hurt. For longtime residents like Jeremy Brandt, Maplewood Zephyr Place neighborhood is just like any other in the St. Louis area. Yeah, it's usually pretty quiet. There's sometimes some business going on down there, but it's usually not too bad. Late Sunday night, Brandt was getting ready for bed when he heard gunshots down the street. And they weren't real loud, so I wasn't sure at first if they were shots, but then when all the police showed up just a few minutes later, I figured that must have been what it was. According to Maplewood Police, officers located a stolen Mercedes at a nearby apartment complex. And when they tried to approach, the driver took off toward them. So the officers opened fire on the car. We have too much positive stuff going on in St. Louis to be um, wasting time with nonsense. This is not a video game. You don't get a restart button. Police say the car struck a concrete barrier, a police cruiser, and several parked cars before crashing through a nearby fence where the suspects tried to run away. Glad to hear the cops got to here, getting here as quickly as they did, and they were real thorough. I know they were going through everybody's backyards looking for more folks. Ultimately, three juveniles were taken into custody and multiple guns were recovered from the car. No way we should have guns in the car riding around on Father's Day. Yeah, I do wonder how they ended up here for sure. Kind of an adventure, but yeah, glad no one was hurt, including the kids. At this time, the incident is still under investigation. If you saw anything suspicious in the, in, the, in the area or have any information, you are being asked to call Maplewood Police. That number is 314-646-3617, and any tip can be left anonymously. Reporting live in Maplewood, Holden Kerwicki, 5 on your side. New details tonight about a deadly stabbing in North St. Louis County. It happened on Saturday in Berkeley. Police say Laurent O'Kane killed his mother and niece. The victims were Miyoshi McLeod and 11 year old Mayel Harris. We're told McLeod went to police one week before the murder, saying her son was threatening them. Today we talked to a domestic violence organization about partnering with police to prevent crimes like these in the future. If we can just pair up together and marry together those resources, I think that would help uh, the people to know that there are different places they can go. They don't just have to go to the police station, but then they can go to other organizations that can assist as well. And we will do everything we can to assist so we can not have another one of these situations. The suspect had his initial court appearance today and will remain without bond until his bond hearing next week. St. Louis Mayor Tashara Jones is exploring ways to raise more money after the city settled a lawsuit over the earnings tax for remote workers. Our political editor Mark Maxwell has more on the mayor's push to find more money. Mark? Yeah, Mike, today the mayor's office was very sensitive to any suggestion that she's floating an outline of an idea of a potential tax hike. But she is putting that fraught political task on 12 other people, people who she will appoint. The city tax collector is setting aside $26 million to pay refunds over the next 90 days to people who worked remotely outside city limits since before the pandemic. That's a rough guess, that number, but the mayor is also considering ways to plug that multi-million dollar hole going forward. She highlighted how low the city's earnings tax is at 1% now, comparing that to higher income tax rates in other cities. In this executive order, the mayor stressed the importance of additional funding. She wants those appointees on the panel to seek implementable long-term revenue strategies, and she contemplates ways to do that without disproportionately burdening residents with lower incomes. So we asked her point blank, does that mean you're open to raising taxes? The city's earnings tax is only 1%. We want you to continue that contribution. That's why I am announcing the formation of the city's first long-term revenue advisory council. It sounds like you're suggesting that you're open to raising taxes to replace this revenue hole? No, you're putting words in my mouth. Well, Mark. you're creating a I panel. Am saying, I am saying that we want to make sure that people enjoy living in the city and enjoy all of the 
the amenities that that one percent tax uh, uh, contributes to. That panel will include the mayor's own staff along with other appointees. She ordered those people to send her their ideas to plug in this big budget hole in the middle of next January. That's just a few months before she's back on the ballot seeking re-election. Remember, uh, Board of Aldermen President Megan Green previously suggested that blows to the city's earnings tax could mean cuts to police spending, but nothing in this executive order urges the mayor's panel to explore cuts, just ways to bring in more taxes. Thanks, Mark. Well, if you've been outside, you know it is hot and it's humid, <laughs> and it's a good idea to stay inside in the A.C. this week if you can. Yeah, meteorologist Jim Castillo is looking at temperatures in the 90s and even some triple digits oh. later this week, right, Jim? I know. Yeah, yesterday was 97 for the high in St. Louis, 96 today, and yes, by the end of the week, uh, we may hit 100, and it might be that way for a couple of days. So uh, right now, the clouds are beginning to move in, even to St. Louis. We're lucking out here, but then you get to Chesterfield, you see the clouds to the south, but it has cooled down Lambert to 92, still feels like 96. So that humidity is up there. The dew point was at 70 last hour, went down a few uh, degrees, but we're watching the Doppler weather radar. Lucky enough to see a few showers Perry County, Missouri, Randolph County, Illinois, and right into Washington County in Illinois. But again, sub-severe, and most of these bubble up and then bubble back down again. A couple of storms are now just showers in Montgomery County. And then again, it's mainly on the Illinois side, but Chester to Sparta and then to Coin, uh, seeing that shower activity. So that's cool things down in their area to about 70 to 75, 76 degrees, but it's still St. Louis, about 92. Much more in our forecast coming up. All right, and the extreme heat is a concern, a big concern for people who will be outside. Tonight, thousands of people will pack into the Muni for the first show of the season. Gary Frank is live there with a closer look at how the venue keeps people cool. Gary. Yeah, first and foremost, you're right, it is warm. Jim's talking about how it's, uh, the clouds have settled in. It's feeling a little bit better right now than it is earlier. I mean, even just stepping outside on the way here, the wind has picked up significantly. So that's at least a positive. That's something that we didn't have. So as people are already starting out and getting out and about, and you can see with some of those flags and things moving around a little bit, you know, there are a lot of ways that we're going to be able to stay cool because we know anytime you come to one of these shows in the summer, it's going to be hot, right? And this is not the 100 plus degree weather. There's no heat advisory. There's no excessive heat warning morning but it's still hot outside, and that's one of the reasons they have these things at night. Now, there are things that they have been doing and actually to prepare to make it better. In fact, I talked to Associate Director of the Arts um, here at the Muni, Michael Baxter, earlier about what makes this season different from last and what they're doing to make things better. Everything's a little bit bigger. Everything's a little bit better and brighter, and the innovations of the things that we have put into our stage and stagecraft and artists and artisans, it takes a village, it takes a community to do what we do. And we've put a lot of time and thought into making sure that they have world-class entertainment. Well, and for the most part, too, and even talking to him, you know, coming up at six o'clock, we talked about the specifics, too, as you know, it relates to the performers and some of the things that they've done around uh, going inside the gates. And we've got a lot of people that are waiting out and about. I've seen some people with pants on, which too much for me. But actually, honestly, with the breeze outside, it's not feeling as bad, especially as the sun sets. Those clouds have settled in. So we'll check in on that a little bit later on. But right now, honestly, to report in front of the Muni, the wind's blowing around a little bit and it feels pretty good, guys. Gary Frank, five on your side. And a reminder, there are cooling centers throughout the St. Louis area. For that info, text the word HEAT to 314-425-5355. A Missouri woman has spent 43 years behind bars. Now her murder conviction is overturned. Tonight, her lawyers say they know who the real killer is. A warning label on social media, why the nation's top doctor is pushing for 